You are listening to the Aging Starts Now podcast, where it's all about responding with confidence to the legal, financial, and personal challenges created by disability, unexpected illness, or simply aging in general. Join us weekly as elder law attorneys Tim Takis, Barbara McGinnis, Chris Johnson, and other members of the Takis McGinnis Elder Care Law Team talk about the tools, techniques, strategies, and services that will make the elder care journey easier for everyone involved. Get ready, because aging starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number 99 of Aging Starts Now. I'm Barbara McGinnis, certified elder law attorney and partner at Tagus McGinnis Elder Care Law. Today, we're going to speak about natural burial. Joining me for the discussion is John Christian Pfeiffer, the executive director of Locksburg Conservation here in Sumner County, Tennessee. Welcome, John Christian. Thank you for hey, doing this. Hey, Barbara. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to kick off the new year with um, talking with some friends and, and uh, hopefully helping folks out with some end-of-life planning and just getting things in order. That's what that's the theme of this season. Let's get organized. I've already knocked out several closets in my own home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I, I, I think everybody's kind of got... Um, spring cleaning and organizing on their mind this time of year. So I'm glad to be with you today. Thank you so much for the invitation. Absolutely. And I I think you're right. I don't do New Year's resolutions, but I have this intent of becoming more organized this year and organizing my documents and just my pictures and everything that needs to be organized so that it would be easy. But no, I, I, nobody really likes to think about dying and where they're going to be buried or how they're going to be buried, but it is eventuality. It's a hundred percent reality for all of us. So we might as well at least plan it the way we want it to be done and, and make the experience what we want out of our life. So start by telling folks what is Larkspur Conservation and where is it? Absolutely. Larks for Conservation is a 501c3 organization, and we serve as a resource to the community uh, for end-of-life planning and just demystifying and sussing out what's important to folks at the end of life. We have created Tennessee's first nature preserve for natural burial. Our 100-acre conservation cemetery is located where you are in Sumner County, just under an hour from downtown Nashville. And it's a beautiful place. It's reminiscent of your favorite state park or hiking area. If you have those type of places that you love, those green spaces that you get to go on a hike um, and just get out of town and turn off your phone, that's the type of place that Larkspur is. Our main office is located in Nashville, but we typically office um, on site at the Nature Preserve. So if this is a place that somebody just... Want, they're curious. They want to see how is this different from a conventional cemetery? Can they just make an appointment to tour with you? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we offer a free planning session, and that's kind of our first step with everyone. Uh, we present them with a planning guide, and we talk to them in person or over um, over the phone or Zoom, and we can really talk through everything that's important to them and help them understand what Larkspur is what conventional burial is, what cremation is, how all of the different, um, all of the different options at end of life work. Um, what we focus on is conservation burial. And um, green burial is something that you hear a lot about in, in the past few years and different news articles that pop up. And green burial is burial that takes the environment into consideration, typically by eliminating chemical embalming, the use of plastics, metals, concrete, and precious hardwoods. Conservation burial, what Larkspur does, is green or natural burial with a focus on saving land. Our entire property is protected by a third-party conservation easement that forever limits and restricts how the land can be used. It prevents clear-cutting, mining, subdivision, agriculture, all of those things that could damage or degrade the land over time. Our conservation easement is held by the Nature Conservancy. Oh, that's, I mean, everybody's heard of the Nature Conservancy. Yes, we're the only conservation burial ground in the world protected by the Nature Conservancy. They, um, in many aspects, are the largest conservation organization that protects land around the world. 
And our Tennessee Office of the Nature Conservancy worked very closely with us on this project because our property sits adjacent to Taylor Hollow State Natural Area, which is protected by the Nature Conservancy as well. So that's that's really interesting. So you're you're it's not just a hundred acres; it's like the hundred acres plus this other park. I mean, I know you're not going to bury people in in the park. That's for the the Larkspur Conservation, but I don't know. It's just something very peaceful about thinking about your setting there. So talk right. a little bit more about what's what's green and how it's different from conventional. Anything other than, well, you, you kind of gave us a long list. Well, typically in a conventional burial ground, or for most of us, um, even myself, I've, been to, I've spent so many years working in the conventional funeral industry. Um, the way it's been done for so long has been a municipal type cemetery or a cemetery that requires a vault or an outer burial container. And a lot of times people are embalmed um, just because that's the way it's been done so long. Um, but natural green conservation burial actually really takes into account the environmental impacts that we have at the end of life and how we can lighten the load on our carbon footprint and make a place that's open and green and alive for future generations that's forever protected. I think some folks think that they're doing, um, I mean, they're choosing cremation and that they're not taking up the land and all those resources. But cremation, I think I remember you talking about this one other time, um, the, the pollution that is caused by cremation. Cremation is not as green as what folks think. And a lot of people think, you know, I'll just be, I just want to be cremated because it doesn't take up space and it's quick and easy. And um, what we have found is that most people that are choosing cremation are choosing cremation because of cost and they're choosing cremation because they want to avoid the discussion of death. And it's pretty easy to avoid things when you um, reduce them to ash. Um, And what we know is that families actually have a much better um, process with their grief and their transition in loss of losing someone when they're able to come together in ritual and lay someone to rest, knowing that what they're doing is positively impacting their community and their, in their environment. So when you said people, and I think that's right. People pick cremation sometimes just because it's lower cost than a conventional funeral and burial plan. What, what's the typical cost to be buried at Larkspur? Our cost from start to finish, including everything at Larkspur, is $4,000. That is for a natural burial of a body. For cremated remains or ashes to be buried at Larkspur, it is $2,500. Generally, a family uses a funeral home to coordinate transportation of the body, um, purchasing a casket, basket, or a shroud for the body to be placed in, and any additional help they may need. Uh, And we keep a list of funeral homes on our website that have either had a burial at Larkspur or have received natural burial training from us. Um, And there are so many now. When we started, you know, um, coming from the funeral industry, I was able to reach out and really help educate former colleagues on this practice that was now available in Middle Tennessee. And we've had so many funeral directors come forward and really embrace and participate in natural burial at Larkspur and actually choose it for themselves. Yeah. So can you reserve a spot there? You can in a roundabout way. Let me tell you how. Okay. Grave grave sites are selected during a terminal illness or when a death occurs. Mm Mm-hmm. A family can meet with us and plan ahead for everything else. Um, If a family were to meet with us today, perfectly healthy, 50 years old, no need for um, selecting a grave site now because we want to allow the trees and the landscape to grow and flourish over time. So we're going to maybe say, today I would like to let you know, John Christian, that I really have always wanted to be buried in the meadow with wildflowers, native grasses, butterflies, and birds. Or someone may say, John Christian, I prefer the woodland where the ferns are and it's shady and it's cool in the summer. 
uh, I think I would like to be buried in the woodland. So we can note someone's preference, but an exact space is not reserved until a death occurs. And when the first death occurs or the first burial occurs in a family, the adjacent space can be reserved for a spouse. Okay. And, yeah, because and, and some folks say, well, I want to buy 10. I said, well, you know, we don't reserve a full 10 burial graves adjacent to each other because what we're doing is we're working around Mother Nature and with Mother Nature. And the philosophy at Larkspur is that everyone returns to the same earth and upon burial, we all become a part of the same meadows in the forest. So in a way, wherever you're buried at Larkspur, you're all still connected. Oh, well, that's comforting too. But didn't, haven't I heard that the, there's still a marker there so that you can still find the grave of your loved one, right? Absolutely. Um, we, we take care of um, recording where people are buried within the natural landscape in the nature preserve. The same way you know where people are buried in a normal cemetery and then some. So first, with our mapping system, we mark each grave site with an aluminum medallion showing the person's name and years of life. We then record GPS coordinates on every site and also offer the placement of a native stone on the grave. Some mm -hmm. families even go a step further and choose to work with us to plant a native tree or wildflowers or grasses over the grave. All of that is just fabulously interesting. I love the idea of planting the, the trees and it's another way of leaving a legacy. But the the markers, in, in the past, I heard you talk about them as being geo markers. So if somebody that was interested in genealogy mm -hmm. and, and they use cemeteries and grave sites as a way of tracking their family history, your conservation efforts still fit perfectly with that. I mean, you still can track where your loved one is. Absolutely. Even a hundred years from now, we would still be able to, there's maybe not a headstone there, but there's a way of, of recognizing that this is where your loved one was laid to rest. Absolutely. Uh, we use that GPS system in order to upload it to our software and enable people that visit the site to actually search for someone that's been buried there. And when they type in their name, say mine, John Christian, uh, they will find uh, a biography for my entire life, pictures, maybe a video, maybe a song. They'll also find an option where they can see the map and they'll show where they are, where I am located in the preserve and where they are standing when visiting. And it will allow them to walk to the actual site of burial and visit the grave site, flip through my bio, look at some old pictures, or just learn about a family member that you maybe never got to meet. So genealogy is extremely important to us. That's one of the reasons that we enable families to use a native stone, which is just a rough, smooth, beautiful, um, each one is unique and different, native Tennessee rock that has been carved with the person's name in their years. It's very simple, it's very beautiful, and it does the job of marking a space for someone. But we want to be able to tell more of the story, more than what a stone can tell. So that's the reason we record all of that information and upload it to our software system. Now, for everybody that's concerned about software and what if the power goes out, the Wi-Fi is not working, etc., at our office, we record all of this information in a personal paper file as well. So we have an old-fashioned record system to keep up with everything, too. Um, what about unique planning requests? Have you ever had someone that say, yes, uh, I want this space for me? And, and uh, well, what you were just talking about, <laughs> reserving the family space. I guess I don't get to pick out my spot just yet. But I have, now, had, I have had a family that said, <laughs> I have had a family that was, um, that was choosing a site. And the husband said, well, I want to be I want to be in the woods because I like the shade, but she always laid out by the pool. So she'll be in the meadow and that's where we'll put her. <laughs> and that's um, totally okay. And that's totally okay. We've had, we've had families that have chosen to bury the ashes of their um, companion animal with them um, at the burial. We have had um, some families that have come together and made the decision to bury 
um, ashes of both mother and father at the same time into a grave at Larkspur. Um, you know, it can be as unique as nature will allow it to be, but we haven't had anything too off color or interesting in that, in that sense of burying someone on a Harley Davidson or anything like that, because that wouldn't be very green. And who wants to bury a Harley Davidson either? Those are made for the road. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Great. Uh, It's a 501c3. So even Mm -hmm. if you don't want to be buried there, you could still contribute and support the land conservation initiative, perhaps. Yes, you can support the land conservation initiative. Um, our land fund and helping us conserve more land in Tennessee. You can also donate to Larkspur to help us serve and take care of families who may be financially burdened. Um, all of the all of the families that we meet, we we have a um, we have a mentality and a vision and a, a mission to really lead with mercy with Father Charlie Strobel and. Mm-hmm. Um, Reverend Becca Stevens, both members of our board of directors. Um, we have always wanted to um, be good neighbors and take care of our communities. Um, and in doing that, we do not want to tell anyone no based on cost. So if someone were to come to us um, with a financial need, uh, we have dedicated a fund that can help cover costs um, or help with costs for burial at Larkspur if that's important to a family. Sure. So when people hear about Larkspur and they may have chosen to be buried at um, Woodlawn or any other larger cemetery, and that's fine if that's someone's choice, but if they wanted to do something to help others as a nonprofit organization, all donations are tax deductible and you can help the community and the land at the same time. Well, I think that's a beautiful mission. Um, I'm going to come see you, John Christian. We're going to we're going to talk about this. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for being here today, and that's it for today's episode. Barbara, thank you so much. Absolutely, and we'd like to thank our listeners for listening. Take Us McGinnis is a life care planning law firm helping families respond to the legal and financial challenges caused by chronic illness or disability of an elderly loved one. Join us next week for another episode of Aging Starts Now. Thank you for listening to the Aging Starts Now podcast. For more information about today's show, visit tn-elderlaw.com, click on the free resources tab, and then click on Aging Starts Now. You'll find the show notes there. And while you're at it, why not check out all the free resources available at tn-elderlaw.com? Document downloads, the Take Us McGinnis blog, educational videos, informative articles, helpful links, a TV show, and more. It's all there free for the taking. If you enjoy listening to the Aging Starts Now podcast, please subscribe, rate the show, or leave us a review. It's easy to do on whatever app you use to listen. We would love your feedback on the show. Aging Starts Now. We'll be back next week with more candid discussions about challenges created by aging, disability, and unexpected illness. 